the first section we had <coughs> three terms that you need to be familiar with. Central angle, inscribed angle, and intercepted arc. Hey, when we talked about a central angle, a central angle, there were two properties. The vertex of a central angle is located where? The center. And the radii, or the sides of the angle are radii. Okay, so in this case, the central angle is angle ABC. Okay, vertex is the center, the sides are radii. Okay, if we go to the next term, an inscribed angle, the inscribed angle has a vertex located where? Now the vertex is on the circle, and in this case, The sides are no longer radii, now they are chords. So angle ADC would be representative of an inscribed angle. And when you're looking at these two things, they each intercept the same arc. An intercepted arc is defined as the portion of the circle circumference. that's located in the interior of an angle. So when you look at uh, this central angle, ABC, here's angle ABC, and so if we look at all the interior points of that angle, what's the only portion of the circle that is contained in that interior? It is arc AC, right? So AC is your intercepted arc. And when we look at the other angle, the inscribed angle, here's our inscribed angle, this side and this side, and then all the points in that interior. What's of that interior, what points on the circle fall in the interior? Again, it is BC, so, or I'm sorry, AC. So AC is the intercepted arc for both the central angle and inscribed angle. So be aware of that. We also talked about the relationship between these angles, and that is uh, with a central angle. The measure of your central angle, ABC, is exactly equal to the measure of your arc, AC. And what was the relationship between an inscribed angle? Did we talk about that at all yet? I don't think we got to that. Okay, and so beginning in this section, we're going to start talking about some of these other angle relationships. And the inscribed angle... So ADC, has, it does have a consistent relationship with the intercepted arc, and that is it's one half the intercepted arc. So if we're looking at this here, and I tell you that angle ABC is 40 degrees, what does that mean arc measure AC is? 40 degrees. The intercepted arc is equal to its central angle. Now, based on what I just told you here, if you have this inscribed angle D and it intercepts an arc of 40 degrees, what is the measure of arc D, or angle D? Half of that or 20. Okay, so that relationship is going to exist for any angle that intercepts this arc. So if I drew an angle over here that's inscribed angle E, what would this angle measure be? Half of the intercepted arc or 20. What would be this angle measure here? F would be also 20. Any angle, any inscribed angle that intercepts the same arc is going to be equal. And now this can be uh, further expanded when you're dealing with a semicircle. And so if I took this semicircle WZY and I wanted you to find the measure of this angle Z, 
it winds up being an inscribed angle, right? Its sides are chords of the circle. Okay? If you were to imagine the remaining portion of this circle here. The sides are chords, the vertex is on the circle. So your angle is going to be half of that intercepted arc. Well, your angle is intercepting this completely un or this removed arc of the semicircle. What is the measure of that? It's 180 degrees. So the angle itself is half of 180 or 90. So what this tells you or allows you to see is that any angle inscribed within a semicircle is always going to be what measure? Since it, it's always going to intercept that endpoints, no matter what you're looking at here, it's always going to be a right angle inscribed in that semicircle. Okay, so that's based again on this same relationship.